Um, that's it. Okay, let's start. Uh, good afternoon. Good morning to everyone. Uh, so, are you guys free from any on the assessment yet? Uh, have you guys finished all the tests? Not yet. What, what do you guys? What, what else do you guys have? Huh? Already finished. No more test. No more assignment. Oh, how many? All the others. Oh. Okay. Okay. Uh, community service final with more OD project. Okay. Community service service the the but some five issues are okay. better than probability project. Okay. Yeah. I know. Ah, life is hard. So. Maybe <laughs> sure. Okay. Okay, so um maybe I'll release mine after holiday. Yeah. So yeah. I'll release everything. So we need to work hard after the holidays. Okay. And then until the end of the semester. Okay. Um so let's start. So where did we left last time? Left last time. So we look at these uh, double integral. Or the volume integral. OK. So what are we really doing in the double integral volume integral? So we look at function of two variables. Okay. Functions of two variables. So this is limited to function of two variables again. Okay. So remember that last time I say that function of two variables uh, puff out a plane or a surface inside the 3D space. Okay. So when we are doing the volume integral, what we are doing is we take rectangle, okay, to approximate the volume under the surface. Okay, we take the rectangle to approximate the volume under the surface. So how do you think how you should think of it is you, you have a one variable function, okay? Starting to think from the one variable case. Okay, you have one variable case. So this is a generalization from one variable case. By the way, uh, I realize that some of you can't understand what I said. I'm not sure, but uh, if you don't understand any word I say, please uh, ask me to repeat or use another word that you don't. Okay. So if you get lost, you don't know what I'm talking about, you should ask me again. Generalization, okay? Generalization, yeah? So generalization from one variable. So in one variable, last time we discussed that we use uh, vertical strip to estimate our area, okay? And then we reduce the strip, reduce the size of the strip until we get everything inside the area. Okay. We look at the limit of this width going to zero. Okay. Similarly, we do the same for double integral. Okay. So double integral here, okay, we differentiate f okay, uh, along some domain. Okay. Along some domain. And then what's this uh, definition here? We're taking the double sum. Okay, we take the double sum of our rectangle because rectangle have two sides, right? So you have to add up both sides. Okay, so we have double integral. Okay, so given the rectangle, you have the height. So you need volume, so you need the area. Okay, so how you change your partition will affect your area of uh, your rectangle. 
area of a cross section of rectangle. Okay, so you when we take this sum here, we take more and more sum. Okay, so meaning you take more and more rectangle. So the size doesn't change. So how you take more and more rectangle? You need to reduce the size of your rectangle. Okay, so once you reduce the size of your rectangle, then you will approximate everything under the rectangle. Make sense? Okay. So you are not taking arbitrary rectangle, okay? So you are relating this triangle back to the value of your function, okay? So these are the points inside your domain, and then you look at the f of that point, okay? So you are not taking arbitrary rectangle to approximate, right? So you don't take arbitrary rectangle. So you must take rectangle that close to this uh, point close to the point of the surface, okay? So that's why we care about the value of F at the uh, point in the domain, okay? Make sense? Make sense or not? Or oh, too long the sentence? Okay, so, uh, so what we deduced last time, I, we didn't prove it, so it's just a statement. It says that if your function is positive, okay, if it is positive, right, then the area, uh, the volume under the surface is exactly the volume of the solid. Okay, so this is a very nice statement here. Okay, so what's the statement here? What's the statement here? So if the function is always positive, okay, you don't go to the negative side on the z-axis, then what is this uh, double integral doing, doing? Okay, the limit will converge to the volume of the solid under the surface. Okay, we didn't prove this, but uh, we can use it. This is true. The surface. Okay. Uh, surface and uh, the domain we integrate over. Okay, so this is nice. So for example, so let's say we have a hemisphere, right? We have a hemisphere. We have a hemisphere here. So what's the equation for a hemisphere? Can someone recall? Uh, let's say we take unit uh, radius one. Can anyone recall what uh, function for the hemisphere? Positive hemisphere. What's the equation of a sphere? Huh? No, no, no. Equation of sphere. Equation of sphere. X squared plus Y squared plus z square equals to one, okay, radius one. So now we want to take just the positive side. So what, what is the equation? Okay, is this the equation? Yes, uh, equation meaning some equal, yeah, equal to z, okay? So equation meaning something equal to something, right? Equa right? So z equals to uh, 1 minus x squared minus y squared. Okay, so if we want to do double integral of this uh, function here, okay, this statement tells us that you don't need to go through the limit. Okay, you don't need to go and do the rectangle. Okay, you don't need to do limit of rectangle. This is exactly equal to the solid uh, Solid upper hemisphere. Sorry, uh, a bit stupid here. It's an object and equal to a number. So what's num what number is this? This is volume of solid upper hemisphere. Okay. So do you know how to find the volume of sphere? No? 
Three. Four over three, pi r cube. So in this case, your r is one. So four over three, pi. Okay. Volume of sphere with radius one. Right. Okay. But now I only want half of it. Okay. Meaning my volume of hemisphere is solid hemisphere is two over three pi. Okay. So this double integral exactly equals to two over three pi. Okay. 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 Good. Any any question up to here? So this is what we learned last time. Okay. Okay. Uh. So let's keep let's start with new stuff. So first we have this uh, integrability theorem. So it tells you when you can do integration. Okay. So if f is bounded on the closed rectangle, okay. So you have a rectangle that is closed. Uh, include all the boundary point, and it is continuous there, except on a finite number of smooth curves. Then f is integrable on R. In particular, f uh, if f is continuous on R, then it is integrable on R as well. Okay, so um, what's the main point here? Main point here is if f is continuous on R, then you can do integration. Okay. So you can do integration on any continuous function. Okay, how about the first statement here? What does it mean by continuous except on a finite number of smooth curves? Can you imagine what's going on here? Imaging what's going on here. This is also a generalization of um, from function of one variable. Okay, this is also a generation of generalization of from one function of one variable. So do you know that for the function of one variable? If your function is not continuous at finitely many points, you still can integrate your dom uh, function over the domain. Let's say A to B. Do you know that? Do you know that? Okay, so what am I what am I claiming is if you integrate over this function here, okay, let's say these are the point of this continuity there are finitely many of them okay this integral is actually equals to you integrate over the same the same way eh? from last time so integrate over the same function with the point of discontinuity removed. These two integrals are actually the same. Okay, so here meaning they have the f same integral a to b. Okay, so first you need to know uh, why this is true first. So, I mean, uh, conceptually, why is this true? Okay, conceptually, why is this true? So, at the point, right, you only remove a single line. Okay, so if you remove a single line from an area, it doesn't do much. Are you okay? Okay. 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 So um, similarly, when you go to uh, two dimensional, okay, in two dimensional line become trivial. Okay. We call it measure zero. Okay. That's 
uh, the boundary become uh, trivial. Okay, you can see that for a, for a line. Okay, the boundary of a line is what? What's the boundary of a line? It's actually the endpoint. Okay, it's actually the endpoint. So this is the boundary of the line. Okay, it's the endpoint. How about the boundary of uh, four dimension, uh, two dimensional surface? Okay, it's a line or a curve, some sort of curve. Okay, so if you remove finitely many of them, it doesn't affect your integral. Okay, this is what it, it is trying to say. Okay. So similarly, if you go to higher dimensional, if you go to three dimensional, then two dimensional surface become your boundary. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Ah. What's the discontinuous point go to infinity? Uh, then, uh, let me think how to say, uh, go to infinity. Uh, see, uh, do we say integrable if it is infinity? Let me check, let me check. Uh, let me check if, if if the integral computes to infinity, do we still call it integrable? Hmm. Let me think, what's the definition of integrable? Let's check. Okay, so let's go back and check. What's the definition of integrable? Okay, so we say that the this limit exists, then it is integrable. So, um, so if this limit go to infinity, does it count as limit as this or not? If limit as this, does it mean limit have to be finite? Let me check. Seems like this one, yeah, let me check, yeah. Yeah. Let me check if a uh, limit exists, do we allow infinity here? Okay. Mm. Okay, we'll come back to that again. Okay, so next, uh, if f is continuous, you, you can integrate it, it is integrable. And some property of double integral here, so that double integral is also linear. Okay, so you integrate over some constant, multiply the function, continuous function, you can just pull out the constant and integrate the original function. If you integrate over the sum of function, okay, it's equivalent to integrate individual function and then add them out. And this is a very nice uh, property here. If you found that your f is bounded by another function g, okay, the integral the double integral respect this uh, inequality. Okay, this is a very nice, nice uh, property. So double integral preserve the boundedness. Okay, so how to prove this? You need to use the original definition of your limit. Okay, you look at the original definition of your limit. So for example, right, okay, so Really, these are property on limit. Okay. In other words, these are really properties on limit. So, for example, the first one. Okay. So, first one, what do you have? You start with constant times a function. Okay. But what is the definition of double integral? You are taking more and more rectangle. Okay. Taking more and more rectangle. So, you have double limit here. Okay. Uh, sorry. Double limit. Okay, of double integral, uh, double sum. Okay, double sum. Why double sum? Because because you need to sum over 
the length and width. Okay, and then multiply by the height of your rectangle and then sum over the area. Okay. Uh, does this expression make sense or not? Does it make sense? This is the definition. Does this make sense or not? Okay, so where's your rectangle? Here is the base of your rectangle. Here is your height of your rectangle. Okay, so you cannot simply take the height of the rectangle. It must be some of the values that attain by your function. Okay. Yeah, question. Zero, huh? Okay, should be infinity. Thank you. Yeah, taking more and more. Yeah, taking more. Until you reach the single strip. Sense? Where's your? Where's my K? Yeah, my K is gone. K should be here. Okay. Any more? Okay. Okay. So how we show this inequalities here? Uh, equalities here. Okay. So we need to pull the k up. Okay. So can you pull the k outside the summation or not? Can? Cannot. Can right? Because these are just finite summation summation right? So you can pull the k up. Okay. So let's pull the k up. Let's pull the K out. Can you pull the K out from the limit or not? Can you? Why? Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. Uh, okay, you can say so, but uh, I just want a simpler answer. Uh, okay, it's a constant, so. Okay. Huh? What? Okay, yeah, sure. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I mean this is huh? just, yeah, just use the property of the limit. Okay. The limit law. Okay. Because the the value this the limit for this exists, so we can pull the K out. Okay. So really you can see this as the whole thing. One whole thing. So maybe A and M. And this okay. So since this guy, uh, the limit of this guy as this. Okay, so this guy as this. When uh, n and m go to infinity, so by limit law we can pull it up. Of course, the limit law here is a double limit, so you need to be careful a bit. Okay. Yeah, so you should uh, imagine to do the same for the rest. Okay. So you use the definition of a double integral and then use the property of summation, use the property of limit. Okay, so what is integral? You are taking sum, taking limit, okay, two operation. This is what you've done, what you do in integral. Okay. Not x become x squared over 2. Huh? Okay. So when you integrate s, it's not just becoming x squared over 2. Okay, double k is it? 
Okay. So when you integrate a function, it's not just a formula. So you're taking two operations here, limit and sum. Sum and limit. Okay. So um so it's quite uh, cumbersome, right? If you keep uh, checking the rectangle, find the rectangle, partition, take limit, okay? So in this course here, we introduce some tool, okay, tool to use. So first, it's called the iterated integrals, okay? So what is in iterated integrals? So uh, iterated, iterated let you to do integration one by one, okay, with respect to the variables, okay? So what is the condition? Let's start with a rectangle, okay? Let rectangle is a cross product of two interval. Does this okay? Okay, so AB to CD, okay? So you got the AB on one side, you got CD on the other side, okay? So you take the cross product of them, Cartesian product, and then you take all the points in the Cartesian product. Okay. Then we can define the iterated integrals. Okay. So uh, iterated integrals, one, one choice is you can differentiate, oh, sorry, integrate with respect to x first, and then you integrate with respect to b. Or you integrate with respect to y first, and then integrate with respect to x. Okay. So let's try. Okay, let's try. Let's try on these two uh, functions here. It's the single function, but different way, uh, different order to do integration. Okay, so let's try the first one, okay? And then I will let you do the second one. So for the first one, a, how do you integrate with respect to x first? Yeah, similar, similar to partial derivative, we treat y as a constant here. Okay, we treat y as a constant. So this is equal to integrate from 0 to 3 of s cubed y over 3 from 1 to 2 dy. Okay, so we also treat y as a constant, similar to partial derivative. So in this case here, what do we get? We get and over 3y minus 1 over 3y dy and we get integrate from 0 to 3 7 over 3y dy okay then you further integrate this okay which you get you get zero uh, contribution from the term x equals y equals zero so you only get 21 over 2. Hmm. Okay. So how about let you try what's the, the other way? When you integrate the other way, what do you get? Can you try and compute what do you get for the other way? You compute what do you get? X squared, Y squared over two. Okay. So when you evaluate this, what do you get? Nine X squared over two. Okay. Others, please check on huh? nine X squared over two. So you integrate this, you get 3x cubed over 2, right? From 1 to 2. So you get over 2 minus 3 over 2, right? So you also get 21 over 2. That's right. OK. So can you see that these two numbers compute to the same number? OK. So this is not a coincidence. So this is a Fubini's theorem. Okay. So if your integration domain is a rectangle, then this iterated uh 
integrals agrees okay no matter what orders you take okay we won't prove this and we won't prove this so how about i let you try this for five minutes and see what do you get for this question here so here we have domain which is a rectangle okay so how to compute the double integral so Fubini's theorem says that the double integral is equal to the iterated it integral. Okay. So you don't need to go through the rectangle limiting sum of rectangle. So you just use the iterated integral by the Fubini's theorem. Okay, I'll let you compute. What do you get? Thank you. Can I share though? What? Okay. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, too hard. Huh? Okay. Okay, do your work. <laughs> finish, uh, finish. Confirm. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Okay, so typically we start with uh, X first and then we start with, we continue with Y. This is the convention. This is the same convention as the D1, D2. Okay, so we treat the first one as X, second one as Y. This is how we add the um, orientation in our coordinate system. So you add the X axis first, and then you add the Y axis, and then Z axis, and then so on. In this question has some tedious part to do, which is the integration by part. But we can check the final answer if we get the same answer. Okay, preferably, right, if you use integral, interrated integral, uh, yeah, iterated integral, uh, make sure you put some, uh, um, put the bracket on. Okay, try to put the bracket on. Okay, try to put the bracket on to indicate that you are using iterated integral. And anyone have a uh, problem calculating the integral number?
But if you do it the other way, maybe it's easier. Because they are equal anyway. So one of the order might be easier than the other. Okay. Can you compute? What do you, what do you guys get? Zero. Okay. So which which order you guys use? DY DX or DX DY? DX DY. Okay. Anyone use DY DX or not? Anyone use DY DX? You are using it. Okay. Go for it. Continue. <laughs> Hopefully you get zero also. Okay, so okay, so if you do dy dx, maybe you will meet uh, partial integration by part. Okay. So if in exam situation, right, you need to decide which one is you can do faster. Okay. So let's do dx dy. Okay. If we do dx dy, what do we get? We integrate from zero to pi of minus y cos xy over 1. Okay, so x is going from 1 to 2. So what do you get? You get minus cos 2y plus cos y. Which in turn, in turn you get minus sine 2y over sine y. Okay, from zero to pi. And then you get zero. Okay. So we have two ways to compute, right? Okay. If this is always positive, this is a this represents the volume under the solid and above the rectangle. Okay. Can we use that method or not? Yeah. Can we use that method? Does this represent the volume under this surface? Can we use it? Yes or no? Can I say again? Okay, sure. I will say again. So, at first we learn two methods, right? So, one method is if the function is always positive, then the double integral represents the volume under the solid above the rectangle. Okay. Two, if your integration domain is a rectangle, by the Fubini's theorem, you can compute the double integral as the iterated integral okay so can we use the volume of solid matter to compute this volume or not? why not huh? because it is not always positive so why is it not always positive here why you said not always positive right so you need to find me a point where it is not positive Does there exist a point such that this function is not positive? What, what, what point? 2, 3. Yeah. 2, 3. How, to, I, how do I compute sine 6? <laughs> <laughs> huh? Wait, I mean, I think they should have a nice point to give you negative, right? Huh? Wait, so what's your x? One point, huh? Pi, pi. X cannot be pi, right? X is in between one and two. Two and pi. Uh. Two and pi? Sine two pi is what? Sine two pi is zero. I want negative. Oh. One point five and pi. One point five and pi. So what is sine 3 over 2? Sine 3 over 2 is what? Huh? Equals to pi times sine 3 pi over 2. Sine 3 pi over 2 is negative 1. Okay, so you get minus pi. So it is not always positive. Okay, so uh, yeah, so you can see that you get zero for the double integral, right? If it is the volume of that solid, right? And then this function is not trivial, then you will be surprised. Something not trivial gives you zero volume, okay? 
So what is going on actually? Actually, there's some part of it is positive, the other part of it is negative. It go under the Z, uh, X, Y plane. Okay, go to the negative part. Okay, so what you compute is the contribution cancel each other. Okay, this is similar to the area stuff we mentioned last time. So we need to do modifi modification of this uh, volume here. So for a function that takes both positive and negative values, the double integral is actually the difference of the volume of V1 minus V2, where V1 is the volume above R and then below the graph of F, and V2 is the volume below R and above the graph F. Okay, so what you compute is actually the positive of the volume above the XY plane and negative of the volume below the XY plane. Okay, so in this case, they cancel out each other. Make sense? Okay. Okay. Okay, good. Very good. Okay, uh, how about this one? Find the volume of the solid under the surface Z equals to 4 minus X squared minus Y over the rectangle R. So, a, yeah. So, what method you want to use? Volume of solid or you want to use Houdini? 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 Do you scared that the volume will get cancelled? Neither. Did you think about it first? So, if Bubini's, does it work? Does it represent the volume or not? Does the Y? Hmm? Never negative. Okay, so we need to show that it is never negative in this region here. Okay, so how you show it? So, you can see that x is always, uh, so x is, uh, let me write where, so s is in between 0 and 1, okay, and then 0 is in between y, uh, sorry, y is in between 0 and 2, okay, so we want to show that uh, our surface is always greater or equal to 0. Is this true or not? Okay. So this is what we want to show. All right. So how are we going to show this? This yeah, should use the restriction. So how are we going to put all these together? All right. So let's look at four minus x squared first. Okay. Uh, can we show something about this number here? So we know that x is uh, x is less than or equal to one, okay. meaning x squared is also less than or equal to one. Okay. So this implies what f minus x squared is greater or equals to 4 minus 1, okay, which is 3, right? So we have reduced the question of 4 minus, not 4 minus x squared minus y to be 3 minus y, okay? Okay, but your y is always in between 0 and 2. Okay, if you take anything in 0 and 2, and then you take 3 minus it, do you get positive? Okay, so this is true because, because what? Because y is less than or equal to 2, which means the 3 minus y is greater or equal to 3 minus 2. Okay, which is greater, which is equal to 1, which is greater than 0. 
Okay. Okay, Anna. Mm, if you like, I can do a bit further reduction here. So it's minus y greater or equal to minus 2. Okay, so you add minus y and minus 2 on both sides of 3. So you attain the inequality. Okay. Can follow? So far, okay. So far, okay. Okay, so good. So this is uh, everything positive, okay? You can use the volume of solid method also, or you can use the Fubini. Okay, so Fubini uh, gives you the iterated method. Okay, so it's easier to find the uh, integration domain. Right. Okay, so I let you try. So what you get, see what you get from this uh, Fubini theorem. You can pick any order you like, and we'll see that they should agree. Okay, yeah, let you try. After this example, we will take a break. So, uh, are you confused? No, I'm okay. <laughs> okay, anyone finish computing? Anyone wonder why the DA become a dy dx? Uh? Anyone wonder why? Why dy a uh, d d area become dy dx? And then continue. Okay. Wait, wait. Wait, wait. Let, let, let him finish us. Can you finish? You finish or not? Are you finished? Okay. What do you want to add? Okay. 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 So the Rectangle, uh, the dx over dy is the length and the width of my base of my rectangle. Okay, and then the x, x i star, y i star, right? They actually point. Okay, they actually point inside my rectangle. Any point. Okay, any point. Yeah, x y. So the x i star and uh, y i star are points, specific points. Specific point in my rectangle, in each rectangle. Okay. Yeah, in each rectangle. Okay, last time I asked you to differentiate what's the free variable, bound variable here. So here, this xi star, y star, a specific point which is the free variable. Okay, we fix, fix this point inside the rectangle that I want to integrate. Okay, so this point will change. Once I change my rectangle, okay. 
consent. Okay. Yeah. Because those, those points will lie into other rectangles once I increase the number of rectangles. Okay. So, uh, what's the integral here? Anyone got any value? Sorry? 10 over 3. Okay. Someone got 10 over 3. 16 over 3. You also get 16 over 3. Two more. Okay. 16 over 3. I think 16 over 3 win. <laughs> because I also got 16 over 3. Okay. So you should get 16 over 3. Okay. So depend on which way you integrate. Uh, you can do experiment, do the other way, you should get the same answer. Okay? Yeah, you should get the same answer. Okay, any question before we break for the next hour? No, no question so far. Okay. Question, question. No? Calculation question or concept question also allowed? Yeah, so this is the diagram here. What is x squared minus y minus z? I think we didn't introduce this surface in this class. Mm, this, the surface is, uh, part of the surface looks like this. Actually, you can find out what this quadrate surface is. This is kind of a quadrate surface. Okay. Okay, if no question, we break until 12.07. Check the previous note. Okay, oh, but I just, just let go of it. So, I from one to I selected the oh. and it doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It's just indexing. What do you mean by some of them? Now we are going to talk about the positive and negative sense. Well, then make sure. Oh, you have to make sure. If you want to make sure, you have to know where it is. Yes, I want to know. Then you have to find out where it is. Okay, so the first one is the first one. You have to find out where it is. You have to find out where it is. 他 satisfy 的，嗯，我是讲 solve 这个。OK， 来，你可以 solve 这一个点的，你 solve 这一个点子。这个不是一个，可以找 root 吧？应该可以找 root 吧？是。诶，这个的话要等于零，只有可能是 y 等于零。的说，或者，或者，或者。或者，或者这个里面的是 x y 等于什么时候等于零三？没有，派 n 派 ，n 派 ，yeah n 派，对 n 派 ，n 派 ，yeah， 可是这边只有零到，啊 ，yeah n 派哦 ，yeah n 派，对，然后嘞，哦。所以，所以 ，x y 等于 m p a s h 所以这代表 x 跟 y 要套回那边吗？反正它 bounded 的嘛。你是说？自己试？你哪个被套回？自己试？呃，呃，嗯，嗯哼。我两个东西存起来是 n 派的
现在我要 claim 一个东西，其实它这边都写是一条线了，所以应该这个是一个线了。这个是线吗？啊？来的是线来的，但是它是一部分线罢了。因为你看，你看，你看 ，y 等于 m pi over x 嘛，它 y 等于 e over x 嘛 ，e over x 是这样嘛，但是它只是 scale 的 e over x， 对不对？所以它这个是它的一部分。Yeah, yeah. 其实没有一个特别的方法。没有没有没有没有没有，这个要 depend on 你的 surface。你要你要 make sure 是这个 equation 是对的，就可以。所有符合这个点的 equation。呀、yeah. ，像刚才用那个什么算的话，这个它就等于零，是因为它删掉了。对，没错。那如果嗯，如果考试的话，我先懂一次先。你考试的话，就像我刚才讲啊，你如果不用的话，你要先 check 一下它到底是不是整个 positive 啊。我 check 到它不是 positive 的。呀，你不会 check 它是不是 positive？ 没有没有，我我 check 到它它有。哦、oh, ，你 check 到它有 negative， 你 check 到它有 negative， 你 check 到它有 negative 的话，你就要你就要去找它的切分开点在哪里啊。And then 你就要 integrate 到这个地方，然后那个要 integrate 到那个地方，这个东西还没有教。怎么学 ？Depend on depend on x 的 integral 吗？没有教。所以道理来说啦，你就要 integrate 到这一条，全部 integrate 到这一边，然后另外一边要 integrate 到这一边，然后减减加，然后你就要减哦，减它的下面那个，因为下面那个算出来是哪个地方，上面那个算出来是 positive 嘛，那你就要减掉下面那个。不懂要怎么找啊？啊？只是不懂要怎么找那条分界点。你这个给你啊，你懂吗？嗯。对吧？对，但是你如何 integrate 从那边到这边，我还没有教。呀。但是呢，你就要 integrate 到这条线。OK。对。是。我们这些不要点名字了。嗯，哎呀。哎，要，等下没有时间。对。星期一天晚上。OK。好，谢谢。OK。二一二一来。陈学院，嘉业，嘉业，离开，离开，老师，原家，玉伟。行，烟波，藤叶，金哪金王林金老爷，林金老爷，林金老爷 ，OK， 杰，王杰 ，OK， 玉金，一周是一周，一周 OK， 金鱼老师。行 ，OK， 登城 ，OK， 双零鼓励，燕京子倩泽轩李云 Grace， 西西 ，OK， 嘉文，小 Michelle Ryan，Ali， 永志，全力 ，OK。我那个为什么可以直接这样子，就是当做 constant 啊，我也是觉得好奇，哎呀，他没有讲，他 pass 掉这个这个 point， 对，所以应该要加一个这个点进去，他 pass 这个还不用紧，然后补比例哦，补比例，补比例的条文嘛，他这边这样写吧，他不用直接留是，呃，我感觉他这样写是不用啊，但是我是我具体要切一下，我感觉他这样写就不用了。只要 exist 应该就要这样的，我感觉。可是我也是要切一下，其实我刚才在讲这种结构，我想也是没错。我我我我 ，Carol， 我看到很怕，现在。毕竟我不切一下，如果有 addition 我会加一。但是先这样算算，所以这个要不要 continue 是不是？嗯。然后嗯，为、um, 什么我们可以这种动作？嗯，什么事？哦，那个那个，你、yeah, 看、yeah.。我刚才就随便一句带过了，像爬山。呀 ，OK OK， 我会加那个。因为那种有点有点有点有点有点有点有点有点有点有点有点有点有点有点有点有点有点有点有点有点有点有点有点有点有点有点有点有点有点有点有点有点有点有点有点有点有点有点有点有点有点有点有点
，你说说你瞬间的吗？说的哪里有？没有，没有啊。我记得。哎，我要记，我要加一下，我要 check 一下。嗯，看一下没有什么帅帅的东西，在哪里？在这边吗？在这里。我们开始做这个，直接带进来啊。Why can trick as a Why can trick as a constant? 呀、yeah, yeah, ，以前这个 not focus on 多罗半，所以呀， yeah, 我我可以补充，我补充。好，然后 OK， 呃，哎 ，good 啊 ，I mean， 呃、uh, ，you should ask、uh, in front of the class 啊、uh, ，better don't、uh, come ask me personally， so because some issue 啊、uh, ，public issue。So public issue should let public know. <laughs> Private issue is okay. Ah, <laughs> public issue should let public know. So just now, uh, uh, Mingxiu asked why we can treat one of the constant as a one of a variable as a constant when we do integral with respect to one constant, uh, a、uh, one variable. So we need to address this. We will come back to this again, and then. To meet this theorem here, do we really need f to be continuous or not, or we just make sure our domain is a rectangle? Okay, so we need to address this. Next time, I will address this. So because this not a、uh, focus on calculation before, so we will go、uh, um, on. We will fill in the detail of the notes. Uh, so next, next here. Okay, so there's another two here. So let's say your function can split completely into function in x and y. Okay, a good news is you also can split the integral into products of、uh, integral of these two functions. Okay, do you think this is a good news? Because you treat another constant as variable, right? So let's say we treat another constant with variable as variable. So meaning you put another constant away and then do the integral later. Okay, makes sense, right?、Uh? Does it make sense? Not make sense. Shen Ling doesn't make sense. Why? Don't know. Eh,、uh, how about we see one example? Yeah, let's see one example here. So. Uh, we want to integrate this、um, sine x cos y dA. Okay, sine x cos y dA over a rectangle. Okay, over a rectangle. So how do we do this? How do we do this? So the theorem says if you can split your function in x and function in y into two products. Okay, product of two functions. Okay, you also can split the integral into products of two. Okay, so how do how do you pick the domain? So the domain is already、uh, already determined by your rectangle. Okay, the interval of your rectangle. So if your rectangle is for the x variable is bounded by a b, so you integrate from a to b. Similarly, if your y variable is bounded by C D, then you integrate from C to D. Okay. So in this case here, in this case here, you can see that we can rewrite this function as just function of x multiplied by function of y. Okay. So this is what it means by g x multiplied by x y. Okay. Inside your g, there's no y anymore. Inside your h, there's no x anymore. Only have y variable and only have x variable in g. Okay, so this is our case here. Okay, makes sense. Okay, so by this theorem here, we can split our integral into two product of two integral, which is zero to power over two of dx multiplied by zero to power over two. Because they are the same interval you take of dy, so what function we need to put inside 
uh, dx when we integrate over dx. Sine x, right? We need to put the function that is uh, having x as a variable. So similarly, we put cos y to the integral of dy. Okay, so in this case here, we break the question down to integration over function of one variable. Okay, so you can do this, right? Okay, so can you do this? What is this? What is this here? So you get minus, yeah, minus cos x from 0 to power 2 times sine y from 0 to power 2. Okay, is that correct? Yeah. So in the end, what do we get? What? Okay, zero times zero plus one times one minus zero, which is what? Okay. So you reduce the question of double integral into integral of one variables. Okay. Yeah. So in the case before here, right? Uh, which one? Maybe this one easier to see. Can you split this into product of two? Functional, uh, not at least not from here. We not from here. Can we speak sine x y further or not? Can we? Is there like sine x y equals to sine x sine y something like that or no? Or just double angle formula. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I, I also know on top of my head now. Yeah. But you can try. Okay. So I believe just now, right? Just now, uh, Brian asked a question, right? So how you decide this uh, negative area? Like for this question, yeah, how you decide negative area? Okay, so you need to find all the points such that your function that is less than or equal to zero. Okay, you need to find all these points here. Okay, you need to find all the points that is negative. All right, so you need to similar uh, equivalently, you need to solve this inequality here. Okay, so when does this function less than or equal to zero? Okay, or in other words, is you can solve where it is equal to zero. Where's the boundary? Equal to zero. So the boundary is when y equals zero and sine xy equals zero. So when does sine equal to zero? Interval of pi. Okay, so it is n pi. So when xy multiply together, you get n pi, then you get zero. Okay. So this equation here, these two equations here actually slash out two lines, right? Y equals to zero and y equals to n pi over x. Okay. So you will slash out two lines in the domain. Okay. Yeah. 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 Then you need to determine. Uh, from this boundary here, uh, what are the points are positive, what points are negative? Hmm. Okay, yeah. yeah. Uh, I believe this is not an uh, easy, easy, easy job for general function, but you need to do this work if you want to determine where is the positive or negative um, value of double integral. Okay. So for example, the just now, the example just now, okay, the example just now for this one, it is easy to check, okay, because I give you a easy rectangle. Okay. So it really depends on the domain and also depend on the function. Okay, to check this. In general, it is hard to check. But that's the strategy to check. Okay. No, I'll just see you finish your drink. <laughs> okay.
Yeah. Okay. Any question before we continue? So we learn a few tools here. Okay. So if not, we continue. So next is the double integrals over general region. Okay. So in general region, how we integrate? Okay. We no longer deal with rectangle now. Okay. So our region change. So let's say your function. Okay. I think this is okay. Before I say right, I spoil a bit. So you guys learn the probability course, right? Always you integrate from negative infinity to infinity. Okay. At first, you should think, wow, this is such a big domain. If I integrate everything, don't I can also get infinity? But usually, you deal with the function that is cut off at a large number of x or small number of x. Small meaning very negative. Okay. So, similar here. So, let's say a function is defined to be some function inside my domain. Okay. And zero, which is in. The rectangle but not in the domain then we just integrate over the domain where the function is non-zero okay so if f is integral over a rectangle then we define the double integral of f just by integrating the domain over the non-zero domain equal to be the integral over the rectangle okay so you might think that why you so troublesome one why you want to relate to rectangle every time, right? Why, uh, why I want to relate to rectangle every time? Because this is the only definition I gave you, okay? You only know how to integrate over a rectangle okay so if you have a normal region okay you have a normal region but it is outside outside d it is zero okay then you just make a big rectangle around the domain and then you integrate over the rectangle then you can use your Fubini's uh, you can use your um, all sort of thing you can do what we learned just now okay I think only three of them interacted uh integral volume and so on Okay. Yeah. So this is the idea here. So let's say my graph is non-zero here. Okay. Over this uh, weird um, beans bean shape domain. Okay. Then we can consider a rectangle around it. Right. This is the idea last time I show you, right? Bound a rectangle by a ball. Or bound the ball by a rectangle. Okay. So you can find a big rectangle around it. And then you do the double integration here. So it doesn't affect, okay, because away for this bean shape here, it is zero. So integrate over zero, then you get zero. So it won't affect the integral. Of course, rigorously, I need to prove to you, but this is the idea of the proof. Okay. Okay, so what kind of uh, shape you will encounter here? So first one is uh, you are bounded by two straight line okay straight line on the two vertical line okay i should say two vertical line on your uh, x and then some curved line on your uh, y value okay so this is one type of them so how you do double integral over this uh, surface okay you should imagine that this is only domain uh. this is the picture in the domain right so this is the domain the domain you want to integrate over. So if you want to integrate the, you want to get the volume, you should imagine another axis coming up. Okay, there's something floating above here. Okay, so this is just the domain. Okay, so how we deal with this domain? So what we do is we can integrate over from the um, bottom function to the top function first, okay, over dy. Because my y, is controlled by x. Can you see it? So you give me an x, I get a different y. Okay. So although I'm integrating over y, right? Actually, I'm controlled by the x variable. Okay. This is the idea. Okay. 
Okay, so the idea here is the y change depending on my x. Okay, so I integrate over at, over y. Okay, with respect to g1 and g2. So first, I need to know that which function is higher, whether g1 or g2 is higher. Okay, and then I integrate from the smaller one to the greater one. Okay, this is. Uh, still the same as a number, but now we replace it as a function. Okay, and then you can see that if I integrate over dy, and then using x function in x, can you see that everything here is in x now? You integrate a function in y, okay, and then you substitute function in x, so you get a function all in x, right? Okay, then now we integrate over dx. Okay, because dx here is a fixed value, a to b, and then you will get a number out of it. Okay, can follow? Can follow now? This is the first time, okay, first time where y, the, the value of y is controlled by function in x. Okay. When y is uh, controlled by function in x, you integrate over y first, okay? Let everything stay, uh, everything integrate to function in x, and then you integrate over x. Okay, make sense? Make sense, huh? Okay, so similarly, you should imagine, how about the other way? Let's say my x is controlled by my y, and then my y is fixed by two fixed line, horizontal line, okay? It is similar, okay? It is similar. So let's say your x is controlled by two functions of y, okay? And then you know that these two functions are greater or equal to one of them, okay? The other is greater or equal to one of them. And then your y is controlled by some fixed horizontal line. Similarly, you when you compute the double integral, you integrate with respect to x first, okay? And your domain is going from function of y to the other function of y. Okay, so you can see that after you integrate, everything inside here should be function in x or y. Y, right? Okay, because after in integration, you substitute your uh, limit here. Okay, so you get everything in y, and then you integrate over y, over two numbers here, you, get, you will get a number as well in here. Okay. Okay. So how about let's us try this uh, question here. Okay, I'll show you one example. So if you don't understand, so let's uh, look at this example here. So this example here say evaluate the iterated integral of the following. Okay. So your surface here is four x plus ten y. Can you recognize what surface is this? Let me check. Ying Ying, you know what surface is this? A what? Yeah, a plane. Okay, a plane with a normal vector 4, 10, and minus 1. Okay, this is a plane. With a normal vector. It's, uh, it's quite important that you can imagine this surface uh, because you... Uh, can somehow see what you are computing. Otherwise, you just look at a bunch of function and number. Okay. Okay. So uh, this is a plane with normal vector four, ten, and minus one. Uh, where's the integration domain here? Okay. You can see that. Okay. This uh, this question actually not very precise. Huh? So I should better put the bracket here. Okay, so with this bracket here, you can see that when you integrate over dx, right, you are integrating over 3 to 5, okay? Okay, so what's this line here? So where is x equals to 3 and x equals to 5? So this is domain. I, I draw out the domain here. Okay, let me draw out the domain. This is the domain, right? So 
where is x equals to 3 and x equals to 5? These are the two vertical lines. Okay, x equals to 3, x equals to 5. 5, 3. How about y? Okay, y is a function depend on x. Okay, so we did integrate from minus x to x squared. Okay, minus x to x squared. So when y is 3, what point do I get? Huh? What point do I get? Minus 3 to 9. Okay, so I got minus 3 here to somewhere 9 here. Okay, how about 5? When x equals to 5, where am I, where am I integrating from? Minus 5 to 25, okay, somewhere up there. Somewhere up there, minus 5 to 25, okay? So now we put the idea, the idea of a calculus together now here, right? So when x increase from x equals to 1 to 5, x squared is increasing or decreasing? Increasing, right, okay? It is a continuous function, so we can really draw the line up. Okay, and then how about minus 3 to minus 5? This is connected by minus x, okay? Minus x is a, a linear, linear graph. So I draw this. So the area bounded by this, sorry, the area, sorry, the area bounded by this region here is the integration domain. Okay, uh, right? So this is not a rectangle, okay? So we need to use the technique we have just now. Okay, so this is the area we uh, integrate over. All right, so uh, does everyone get this domain here? Everyone get how to get this domain? How to read? Explain again. Okay, explain again. So, uh, okay, so first of all, I will explain from where we get dx first, okay? So in, when you integrate over dx, right, the range you integrate from is 3 to 5, okay? 3 to 5 means all the x in between 3 to 5 I want, okay? I need these all these numbers here, okay? So these numbers are cut off by these two vertical lines, s equals to 3, s equals to 5. Does this make sense? This one makes sense, huh? Okay, good. So next is my y is in turn controlled by the x, okay? But what are the x you are considering now? You're only considering x that are from 3 to 5, okay? Make sense? Okay, so now let's check the endpoint first. Let's check the endpoint where my y goes, okay? So on one side, I have minus x. On the other side, I have x squared. So let's check on endpoint first, what, what, what kind of y we have, okay? So when x equals to 3, what is minus x? It is minus 3, okay? What is x squared? It is 9, okay? So I'm taking my y from minus 3 to 9 on the line x equals to 3. Make sense? And then I need to do this for every x in between 3 and 5, okay? And then I'm determining what is the y I need. Yes, and all together, I put them together, it becomes this, uh, mm, something similar to a trapezoid. Okay. Make sense now? This is the, this is the integration domain, not yet volume. We haven't computed volume yet. We need, we just determine what is the domain we integrate over. Just now we integrate over rectangle, right? Okay, now we need to see what shape is this. Okay. Make sense? Okay, like for example, just now, okay, let's let's compare to what we have just now. Let's say we have 0 to 1 and then uh, 2 to 3 of uh, some function of dy dx, okay? So we can apply the same analysis here, okay? Because these are just constant, constant function, okay? So what, so let's look at uh, dx first. So we apply the same analysis here. So 
we are integrating from x equal to 0 to x equals to 1. Okay. But for y, we are integrating from 2 to x. Okay. Meaning y equals to 2, y equals to x. Okay. Y equals to 2, y equals to x. Okay. But this value doesn't change no matter what number you get from 0 to 1. Okay. So for every x, you get this straight line. That's why you get the rectangle. Okay. 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 Yeah. So in, in other words, this is a more general, uh, more general case. This is a more general case. So what we learned just now will fall out from this case. It will have this. Okay. Mm. Okay. Yeah, so you can treat this as constant function and then the number. Okay, so uh, what's the real business here? So the real business here, we need to integrate uh, this uh, iterated function. Okay, so let me show one. Then. Okay, so if you want to do iterative integral, like just now we say, if you integrate over one variable, you treat the other variable as a constant. Okay, so when you integrate 4x plus 10y with respect to y, what do you get? So, 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 4x, y plus 5y squared. Okay, good. So you evaluate from minus x squared to x squared. So what's this? What's this whole thing here? Uh, let me write some more term to see. So let's substitute in our x square and minus x. Okay. Uh, so all together we get something like five x per four plus four x per three minus x square dx. Okay. Then here should be easy because this is just one uh, variable integral. Okay. So all together here, we should get 10180 over 3. Not quite, not enlightening, but anyway, you can check your skill whether you can compute this or not. Okay. Okay. So let's try another example. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Let's come back to here. So uh, just now, Zixian asked about volume, right? So where's the volume here? Where's the volume? Can you see volume from the picture? Or not? Hmm? Can you see volume from the picture? This is what? This is domain, right? Okay. Where is our graph lies in? Graph lies in where? What? Which dimension? R3. Okay. So you need to add another axis. Okay. And then draw out the plane. Okay. The plane will be either above or below this domain here. Okay. And then you look over this domain here and then see what's the volume under or above the plane. Okay, so this is what you're doing. And then if they are a mix of positive and negative, then this double integral will calculate the uh, compensation. Okay, so they cancel out. Okay. Okay, so you need to see the word, uh, whether you want to find the volume or you want to just find the double integral. Okay, because double integral won't always give you the volume, right? Like what we see just now, they cancel out. Okay, so you need to see what you want to find. Determine what, you, what kind of object you want to find. Okay, so next question here is, we have x plus 2y. Okay. X plus 2y. Uh, we took x plus 2y define what kind of subject, uh, surface? 
X plus 2Y. What kind of surface does X plus 2Y define? Actually, you don't need to look so closely. I already asked it. You just listen to what I said. X plus 2Y define what kind of surface? Z equal to X plus 2Y define what kinds of surface? You know? You know? Don't know. Okay, so Shane, you got answer? Parabola, you sure? Huh? Plain right? Plain right? With a normal vector or what? It's a plane. What's the normal vector? With normal vector. Do you know what's the normal vector? 1, 2, minus 1. Good. Okay, so you just take the coefficient of this plane equation when this plane equals 0. Okay. Okay. Uh, sure. So we want to integrate this uh, double integral with respect to d. With respect to d, but this d is not a rectangle, okay? It's bounded by two parabola here. 2x squared and 1 plus x squared, okay? So if you plot these two graphs up, okay, you can see that there are two intersections here, okay? Uh, how do you find the intersection? Intersection of two graphs. You just equate the two line, okay? Equate the two equation, okay? So because why you equate two equation? Why do you equate two equation when you want to find the intersection? Yes. Yeah, the same coordinate. Yeah, the same coordinate. Because same height. one by one, huh? Because. Mm, not quite, not quite. They yeah, have the same height. Sure, they have the same height. You? Okay, so in geometry, it means what? This intersection point lies in the first curve and also lies in the second curve. Okay. Okay, okay good. So, um, Y equals to, uh, so we equate two equations here, and we will get that X is equals to plus minus one, okay? When X equals to plus minus one, you can see that you can compute the Y from both of them, okay? Because it exactly lies on both of them. Okay? So you can use any one of them to compute your Y. So when X equals to one, Y equals to two, X equals to, Minus one, y equals to two as well. Okay. So, um, so, so how to compute this double integral? Any idea? Any idea on how to compute this double integral? How you set up the integration domain? to set up the integration domain. Which one is in the uh, function of which? Okay, why is it in the function of x? Sure. So y is in the function of x. So what kind of function it get control? So your s or your y, you see your y bounded by what function? Bounded below by what function? So if you take a y here, okay, you can look at your x. So it is bounded below and bounded above by what function? Okay.
below by 1 plus x squared above pi 2x squared. Is this correct? Huh? No, why? Yeah. 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 So everything above here is 1 plus x squared. Everything below here is 2x squared. And then all the y is lying in between them. Okay. So if you take any y here, okay, you can see that this graph here has a higher y value. And then the other graph, 2x squared have a lower y value. Okay. So this two should be swapped. Make sense or not? Does it make sense? Make sense? Huh? No, no, no. I mean, you can uh, express if you don't think it's true. Why is it not true? So, do you see that um, two? Do you see that two x square? The value of two x square is always less than or equal to the value of y inside this d. Right. Wait, I mean, are other confused or just simple confused? You don't confuse already? Okay. You want, uh, okay. Okay, okay. I mean, others, how about the others? Can, can, can you see that all the y's are bounded below by 2x squared and bounded above by 1 plus x squared? Okay, 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 okay. Okay, how about your x? How about your x? How about your x? Huh? Your x is going from where to where? Minus one to one. Okay. Yeah. Minus one to one. Okay. So how you imagine this? So you have minus one to one here, right? Okay. So your function of two x square cut out everything below it. Okay. And your function of one plus x square cut out everything above it. Okay. These are the things you don't want. You only want the shaded region. Okay. Only the y in between these two functions I consider. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so how we rearrange this? Because x is just is not it's a constant function, so we will put the constant function upside, and then we do the variable uh, variable function inside of. Uh, Okay. Okay. All right. So what's this integral here? Huh? What's this integral here? So we need to do. Mm, how about we don't do this integral? <laughs> I let you try at home, and then you can check the answer. Okay, but I give you the way how you do this uh, double double integral. Okay, should we try one more question or not? You want to try? No one. You want to try one more question or leave the question as homework? Ah, as homework. Okay. Yeah. Question. For this kind of mm -hmm. double integral, can mm -hmm. we apply? Can we apply for B name? Mm. No, uh, uh, let me think how to say no. Uh, okay, so I think I think uh, you can see that this uh, you can see that actually kind of weird here, right? Okay, we define the integral over this domain as uh, integral over rectangle, but when I show you the calculation, it is varying based on the function. So where does the rectangle go? 
Okay, so where does the rectangle go? So actually, this equality right here, right, need to be proved. Okay. When you prove this equalities here, somehow you need to use this uh, rectangle stuff. Okay, so uh, meaning you need to go through the Fubini first. After the Fubini, then you need to decide what to cut off. And after you cut off the thing that you don't want, is exactly what you integrate over. Do you see what I'm trying to say? Do you see what I'm trying to say? I know. Okay, 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 okay. Wait, 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 wait. Let me try again. So you see, so you see. So, okay, try again. I try again. So you see. So first, we define the integral over non rectangular domain be the integral of rectangular domain with a modified function here. Can you see this modified function here? It is only fxy, little fxy, when it is in the domain you want to integrate over. Outside the domain, I put zero. I kill it. Okay. I kill it. I kill it outside the domain. Okay. Does it make sense? Okay. So uh, the question is, uh, the claim is, the claim is you will involve Fubini's theorem when you want try to prove this uh, equalities here. The claim is, okay, because from double integral over rectangle, then you can you will go over the iterated uh, function, and then when you do the iterated function, you will see that you are integrating some part with value zero, some part with value non zero. Okay. And then my claim is the integration domain here cuts out, cut out the plug, the part that is zero. Is it clearer now? Is it clearer now? Zoom. Which part you want to zoom? This part. This part. Huh? So when you split into Fubini's, right? Okay, you integrate over two sides. Okay. And then when you do one side integration, you will see that. Away from the domain of D, it is zero. Okay, so you just integrate over the domain; it is non-zero. That's why, that's why we have these two functions cutting out. Uh, okay, some okay. How about the other? Question? Yeah, see. Better or still got better. Yeah, you can think about, think again and then uh, try ask again. How about the others? Yeah, my claim is uh, you will use Fubini's theorem to prove this equality here. This is my claim. How to use it? I didn't tell you rigorously, I just tell you the idea. Doing the project. And your personal project, huh? <laughs> I don't mark anymore. <laughs> yeah, I mean the project is like for you to like, to like how to say practice this kind of uh, special project. Uh, special project. Yeah, yeah. It's to cultivate your 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 non common practice, right? Yeah, mass culture. Yeah, something like that. Something like that. cultivate the culture. Yes, that's right. No, I mean in future, right? There's no one. Uh, first of all, to guide you. Second, to assess you. No one is assessing you anymore. So you need to assess yourself. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> okay, I mean, yeah. Okay. All right. So how about we stop here? Yeah, let's stop here and then we'll continue the next uh, Wednesday. Wednesday. Yeah. Okay.
Itu lo gue nggak bisa ngincar. Ya? Okay. 